right, as we take our seats, I would love for you to help me welcome our next talker to the stage. Bonnie Earl is a woman's empowerment coach and speaker with a 35-year history in education. Since her husband's death from ALS back in 1997, she's been guiding women feeling pain, fear, and confusion to create a new empowering story of their lives. Bonnie is a master at holding space for women so that regardless of their pain, with support, they can access the deep power, courage, and wisdom within. Bonnie teaches a unique set of practices for a new generation of women who want to lead with their feminine side. She teaches women how to get out of their heads and into their bodies to connect with their powerful feminine energy. Anyone who works and plays with Bonnie embodies the teachings so that they can have a positive, joyful, juicy life, as well as the ability to earn the income they desire. Please welcome Bonnie Earl. So thank you, Sue. Oh my God, what an amazing morning this has been. I knew it would be amazing, and yet I'm not even sure that I could comprehend how amazing. And so welcome, and thank you. Thank you for being here today to show up and be you. We as women, we want to be seen and heard, but we often aren't. We want to make a difference in the world. Every speaker has talked about that. But sometimes, these fears come up. I don't want to be judged as selfish or not a good wife or a good mother if I go for what I want. I don't want to be judged as arrogant. Who does she think she is to stand up on the stage and have something important to say? And so what will I do? I will play small. I will dim my light. And I won't rock the boat then everything will be okay, right? Right? I'll be socially correct. <laughs> I'll be demure. I'll be generous because we know that as women, it's good to be generous, right? It's applauded, in fact. We give and give and give to the point of exhaustion. But that's OK, right? I know what it is to be a woman who has played small in an abusive first marriage, hiding. I know what it is to be a woman in the public education system, a male-dominated system where I was told, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. But then, my second husband, the father of my two beautiful daughters, he was diagnosed with ALS. I was stripped bare. I couldn't do the worrying about what other people thought. I couldn't do the pretending. But there were gifts, just like every speaker has talked about. The gifts were that ALS taught me compassion. It taught me not to sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. And it was ALS that was my greatest gift, my absolute greatest gift. And it was what led me to take an early retirement from the educational system because I knew that I could save women a lot of time, money, energy, unnecessary struggle and heartache. But what happens is that we remember who we are and then we forget. Marriage number three was supposed to be the charm. It wasn't. Four years ago, that marriage of 12 years ended suddenly. 
I, ma I, I managed to pluck up enough courage to sell my home. I sold all of the contents because I wanted a fresh start. But I remember vividly waking up that first morning in my new rental space, my kids' starter home. And I walked out into the empty living room. I sat down in the rocking chair that I had breastfed my daughters. And I was completely overwhelmed with embarrassment, with shame, humiliation, really. How in the hell could I get to this age and stage of my life and not have my shit together? And so, what did I do? I went into hiding. I couldn't do the pretend thing, couldn't put the happy face on, so I went into hiding. And then I received an email, subject line, are you hiding? Seriously, <laughs> that was the subject line of the email, are you hiding? And it was like, God, there must be drones in the neighborhood. <laughs> and I accepted the invitation to that event, just as you have accepted the invitation to be here today, maybe not even knowing why. And I had these huge light bulb moments. I had no idea how much I'd been up in my head, not in my body. I had no idea how much I had disconnected from my feminine. No idea. And that night, as I was driving home alone, I heard myself say out loud, Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm done with this shit. I'm done with worrying about what other people think or say. I'm done. And I'm done with this social correctness crap. I'm done. I'm going to show up <laughs> and be me. And then, this was the amazing thing. <laughs> everything, everything, everything in my life changed. I met the beautiful Women Talk tribe, an incredible group of women. I had all of these wonderful opportunities show up. I was an e-women speaker, co-author of this fabulous, fabulous anthology. And this was my daughter, my elder daughter, who came to the launch with a sash for her mom. <laughs> when we as women show up, we have this incredible impact on our kids, our grandkids, our friends, on the whole friggin' world. My life changed. To be here with such extraordinary speakers, like, are you kidding me? This is a dream come true for me, absolutely. And <laughs> I got to be a guest speaker on the Bridget and Yvonne show, and we had so much fun with that. And I'm going to talk about that a bit more. And then th my business that had been put on the back burner, it began to thrive. And these beautiful, beautiful women came into my life. One of my clients who um, I absolutely adore, she said to me, Bonnie, before I met you, I was existing. Now, I'm living. I'm experiencing joy in a way I have not ever experienced joy in my life. Do you know how great that feels to know that you're a part of something that changes people's lives? And that would not have happened if I had stayed in that place of not having my voice. And then this is the interesting thing. I love my clients, and we talked about limiting beliefs. And, um, and a client came last week with a money tree. Like, so if anybody tells you money doesn't grow on trees, <laughs> you can tell them crapola. There is proof <laughs> that money does. And anything that you want, ladies, is yours. It's yours. And um, this was my daughter and I in Montana last Christmas skiing. And so when I charge for what I'm worth, I then have a lifestyle that is 
so worth living. And in the summer, I uh, took my grandchildren watch to do whale watching in Victoria. So everything in my life has changed. And so today, I have a number of promises to you. The first is that I will share as much as I can, and I'll tell you how you can take it further. My further promise is that for every woman here, you're going to have a greater awareness of what it is to be a confident, magnetic woman. To develop a relationship with your fear, so what, that when the fear comes up, it doesn't stop you. And third, that you'll be able to charge for what you're worth. You'll uh, be able to earn more money. Because when you're confident, magnetic, and you don't let your fear stop you, you're perceived as more credible. And then you're able to make more money. So does that sound good, those three things? OK, perfect. All right. So um, the first foundational practice, and I'm not sure about my, oh, there we go. <laughs> I already did it. I was ahead of myself. We're, oh, and I'm going to go back, because we're going to get to Bridget in a minute. So um, I, can you tell I'm excited? This is what happened. This is my excited. And that excitement and that childlikeness, I had also dumbed down for a lot of years. And so my child is coming out, and I get excited. Um, so a foundational practice. We're all very familiar with those little head bubbles. We've got that little head bubble, right? And there's that little monkey mind chatter. And so when I'm up in my head bubble, it looks and sounds like this. OK, so now um, I want to teach you a practice that will help you get out of your head and into your body. It's called the Million Dollar Practice. What did you notice? What happened? Monotone. Put my mask on. I went small. Yes, I didn't believe me. You didn't believe me. And uh, uh, inauthentic. Yes, kind of like, where did Bonnie go? And that's what happens when I'm up in my head bubble worrying about what other people are thinking or listening to my own monkey mind chatter. And so now I'm going to get out of my head and into my body. And you'll notice my voice drops. I'm going to put all of my attention about three inches below my navel. Martial artists call this the power center. It's our feminine power center in the center of our pelvic bowl. And when I speak from here, I'm grounded. I'm in my feet. I'm here. And now I want to show you a practice that helps you get out of your head and into your body so you can be seen and heard in the way you want to be seen and heard. What do you feel different? Uh, Trust, passion, owning. owning it, yes. Excitement, too. And it seems like such a simple practice, and yet it requires that conscious effort. And it's called the million dollar practice because it brings you home to yourself. If you're not home to yourself and listening to yourself, how can you expect other people to listen to you? And, um, and it, connects, it connects you to other people. My invitation is that for the rest of this weekend, for the rest of your life, that you ask yourself whenever you have a person in front of you, am I up in my head or am I home in my body? And then just notice the magic that begins to happen in your life. OK? Sound easy? OK. And so I will be asking you, checking with you, are you in your head or are you home in your body? OK, so now I was ahead of myself. I would like you to put your hands together and help me welcome the beautiful Bridget Lassard DL to the stage. Oh, I'm a little worried. And you should be a little worried. <laughs> I'm going to learn new things today. Yes, she is. And so uh, Bridget is so fabulous at putting the spotlight on everybody else, and I want to put the spotlight on the beautiful Bridget. And we have many similarities, and that being that it's all about the feminine energy, right? And so um, can you just go up in your head for a second? Just go up in your head, bubble, worry about something, anything? 
You worrying? Yeah, yeah? Okay. If you were meeting Bridget for the very first time, what are some words that you would use to describe her? Just shout them out. Energy. 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 Passionate. Passionate. Energetic. Energetic. Bold, loving, happy. Bold, loving, happy. Confident, funny, hot. She's all these things. Yes, she is. Like, wow. Yes, she is. <laughs> Are you embarrassed yet? <laughs> and so now I'm going to whisper some things into Bridget's ear. And I want you to simply watch and notice if you see any change in Bridget. Okay? So. What do you notice? Gone within? Grounded. She's more grounded. Say again. Present. So grounded, present. Yes. Wasn't sparkling in her head. How interesting. Okay. Keep on watching. Open. <laughs> she told me you were going to say that. Heart. Heart wide open. You can feel it, right? Just like a beam? Okay, awesome. Keep on watching one last time. <laughs> ah, what did you feel? <laughs> Relax. Relax, sexy, confident. What? Pumped up. Sensual, I heard sensual. I actually heard somebody gasp. <laughs> and I saw a couple of women moving in a little closer. This is a woman who is in her powerful and her feminine. Do you want to know, is there anybody here who wants to know what I whispered in her ear? Yeah. Yes? Okay. And so, Bridget, we're going to do it together. So this is called, this practice is called activating the feminine. Masculine is up in the head, feminine is in the body. So activation point one is in what I demonstrated at the beginning, in your power center. And so you can feel it immediately. As soon as she's in her power center, <laughs> she's there. She's grounded. Second is heart wide open. We as women have had our hearts broken, and so we go around with our hearts closed. Oh, we dare to open. Oh, close. Oh, we go around doing this, right? Heart wide open. Safe to have your heart open here. And then third, ladies, the masculine's up in the shoulders. Feminine is in the hips. And so it's just a <laughs> shift of the weight. And could you feel that? It's in the hips, lady, ladies. Okay, excellent. Now, <coughs> because this is the, ad how, how did that feel for you, Bridget? Good. I like that one. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I got to use it more. <laughs> I know, I kind of stand masculine quite often, and I'm going to do that. Just like Just that. Just like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> like boom. I have arrived. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now. Now. We all have heard about the G-spot, ladies. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, the G-spot has nothing, nothing compared to the E-spot. The E-spot is when a woman is in her feminine and powerful energy. There, uh, I was on the Bridget and Yvonne show. And Yvonne asked me about this particular practice. And she says, so tell me about the yoni. <laughs> Bridget thought she said Yoda. <laughs> and then somebody uh, posted, what about the yodel? <laughs> and uh, so this has been renamed the Yoda masculine, yoni feminine. And when you're in your feminine, ladies, it makes you feel like you want a yodel. <laughs> So, uh, Bridget, could you give us a yodel? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> now, ladies, 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 you have to experience this. And so I want each of you to stand up. We're going to yodel. We're going to yodel. And so here's the deal, ladies. I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes, relax your shoulders, your jaw bones. And I want you to bring your attention down to three inches below your navel. And just imagine that there's a lighter crystal suspended there. Just feel yourself in your pelvic bowl. And then open your heart. Just feel yourself open your heart. On the count of three, I want you to shift your weight from being on both feet to just being on the right foot and feel that right hip go out. So one, two, three, hip out. And then just feel what it feels like to be in your powerful and feminine. And then open your eyes. Now, here's the juicy part. Hold your right hand like this. And ladies, are you ready? On the count of three, you are going to squeeze your yoni and close your palm. You're going to go like that. And then Bridget is going to yodel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we so yes, so on the count on the count of three, one. Yon oh, so yo yoni is your uh, vaginal muscles. <laughs> God, did I miss that? <laughs> Good. Oh my gosh, how did I miss that? I talk about excited. Okay. <laughs> Woo! My yoni was working overtime. Okay. All right. So uh, yoni muscle is vaginal muscles. Thank you. Woo. So on the count of three, one, two, three, squeeze your yoni muscles and your palm. Release. And <laughs> Beautiful, <laughs> perfect. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, the things she makes me do. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't, can't believe that I forgot that important detail. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful thing about being a woman. It's that for a lot of women, they have been used, abused, they've been sexualized, they've been objectified, and so they have disconnected from their feminine. And the three activation points that Bridget um, demonstrated, along with the yoni squeeze, uh, helps you feel what it feels like to be in that powerful and feminine. You ha this almost should come with a warning, though. <laughs> There w have been uh, women who have been walking in the Safeway. <laughs> they've been pushing their cart, and they've been squeezing their yoni muscle, and it's almost caused accidents in Safeway. <laughs> 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 and it causes heads to turn. Uh, it's really quite um, a beautiful, beautiful practice. Okay, so I want to uh, switch a little bit, and I want you to... Think about something that you want to manifest in the next six months to a year. What's the one most important thing that you want to manifest? Don't think about it. Just let it come first thing to your mind. Do you have it? And then I want you to also think, what would be the biggest fear? If you were to post something on Facebook, and somebody were to make a comment that would absolutely crush you. You're a liar. You're a fraud. You're arrogant. What would that something be for you? Do you have that? Again, just let it pop up to the surface. And what I want you to think is that that thing, that fear, that if you could develop a relationship with it, you could then have whatever it is that you want. Okay? So you can do that. Got them both? So for me, I want to double the number of women that I'm working with. And then, why? Why do I want to do that? One, 
It transforms people's lives. I shared the testimonial with you. Second reason is this is a picture of my elder daughter, my son-in-law, and my two grandkids. This was a year ago, July, in Nice, France. They were standing on the promenade in Nice, France, minutes before the attack. They were standing in the exact spot. And my daughter had a sense that they should move. And her husband said, no, no, we've come all this distance. And she said, no, we need to move. If she had not listened to her voice, my precious family of four would be dead today. I taught her that. What I teach women saves women's lives. And so would I keep that to myself? I don't think so. <laughs> Here's another why for me. This is my granddaughter, Keziah. When I asked her what that little red mark on her forehead was, she struck that pose and she said, Nana, that's my battle scar. That's so people will know I've been in a battle and I've been victorious. <laughs> that's why I do what I do. Why do you do why you, what you do, right? And then the other thing is the fear thing. For a lot of women, they struggle with, and these are all um, tangled up here at this point, so let's just take selfish. I don't want to be called selfish. What's on the other end of selfish? Humble. Oh, yes, I can be humble. Or so, Sorry, generous. What's the opposite? Oh, my God, get out of the way. Ah, <laughs> opposite of selfish is humble, or sorry, generous. And so can I be generous? Oh, yes, I can be generous. I can give to the point of exhaustion. We've talked about that. But I don't want to be selfish. But what I'm coming to realize is that I can't give from an empty cup. And so when I become selfish about my self-care and when I give to myself, then I can be more in service. And so then can I serve from a place of being generous and selfish? Then I show up as an aligned, congruent, authentic woman. And it's the same for you. And so whatever that something is that you are wanting to create, what could that fear possibly be that is stopping you? And the handbrake then could come off. How is our time? Do we have a timer? We're still good? OK, great. So um, think about then what, what yours is. Another one for me is arrogant. As a child, my mom said to me, stop showing off. I remember I was about seven. And so from that, it was almost like I had two personalities. When I was home, I was very quiet and shy. And then when I was out with my friends, I would be very gregarious and outgoing. And now I realize, too, that if I want to be successful, I have to be confident. I have to be confident in my abilities in order to have the impact that I want. And can I also be humble? Yes, of course. And when I can be both, both humble and confident, when I can show up and be both, then my message is heard. And the same is true for you. OK, so I promised to you that I would share as much as I could. And yes, I have. I got so excited to even miss some parts. And I promised to you that you would have an awareness of what it is to be a confident, magnetic woman. And Bridget showed that really clearly. And when we can deal with our fears, we can move forward in life. So I have a couple of invitations. First one is to come and visit me at my table over there on the left. Uh, I have a free video that will, three secrets to boost your confidence. There are also some, th I've created a walkway 
with red uh, uh, tape, and I will show you some additional practices. I will show you a walk that will turn heads. And I also know that there are some of you who are ready to just sort of dip your toe in a little bit and find out more about what this Art of Feminine Presence is about. And for you, I've got a five-week course that you'll be interested in finding out more. And then I also know, in looking around this room, that there are some of you, and you know who you are too. And you are ready. You are ready to say, fuck it. I'm done with this shit. And you are ready to go for what you want. And I want every woman in this room to know that you are magnificent. You are bigger than any obstacle. You get to write the script of your life. And you deserve to be seen and heard. Thank you. <laughs>